Ruth McGovern in the news this week. In Hartlepool, Keir Starmer's advisers suggest he should move on after chatting for 45 minutes to a patient who had only come in with an ingrown toenail. <laughs> In Andalusia, there's evidence that a recent spillage of omega-3 oil is having an effect on the brains of local wildlife. Buenas tardes, perdona, para Bolonia. <laughs> and just outside Lisbon, it's the first day of term for the apprentices at the Cristiano Ronaldo Football School. Team tonight is a presenter whose first job was in a factory processing peas until someone finally asked for a vowel. Please welcome <laughs> Carol Vorderman. <laughs> On Paul's team tonight is a comedian who has a degree in applied theatre, where they teach you about theatre and also how to apply for temp work. Please welcome <laughs> Nabil Abdul Rashid. <laughs> We begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Ian and Carol, have a look at this. Blimey. He'll be glue soon. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, there's someone speeding. That's Rishi and his wife. Yep. Oh, that's Johnson burying the evidence. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and look, he's being arrested. <laughs> So, good news week all round. <laughs> what a shower, eh? <laughs> An absolute shower. <laughs> I can't believe they are our government. I mean, Boris Johnson is like a dose of diarrhoea that keeps on giving, is he not? <laughs> Just every single time, every time you switch on the news, he's still there. Mm. How does this happen? I think it's something to do with the system. <laughs> <laughs> As Carol says, it's not been a good week for the government, and... Poor old Rishi Sunak. Well, not poor, that's just... <laughs> <laughs> but whenever he thinks things are getting slightly better, um, it all blows up again, and Sue Alla Braverman was done for speeding. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, this is the news that Sue Alla Braverman is off the hook for speeding, but Boris Johnson might be back on it. Again, for COVID breaches, although I don't think I want to see Boris's COVID breaches. <laughs> <laughs> I am very interested in this story because everyone says it doesn't matter and um, so what, it was a speeding thing, but she was Attorney General, mm. which is the person who's sort of in charge of the law, and she asked her civil servants if she could have a one-to-one -one speed awareness yeah. course. Mm -hmm. And this was on the grounds <laughs> that she's extremely well known. It would be embarrassing, and I have to say, I did a speed awareness course, and it was unbelievably embarrassing. <laughs> so you don't do it again? So you don't do it again? Yeah. I mean, the Archbishop of Canterbury went and sat at the back of his speed awareness course. He wasn't on the same one as you, was he? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> How fast were you going, Lillian? I was doing 24 miles an hour outside Ikea. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should appreciate Swella Braverman while she's here. I mean... Yeah, she broke the law as a lawmaker, but I think lawmakers should be allowed to break the law. Yeah. Like, every job has its perks. Like, you know... <laughs> <laughs> you work at JD Sports, you get a discount. You work at Pizza Hut, you get pizza. You live in Croydon, you learn how to fight. You know, there's these things... <laughs> I think she's perfect. I think when that children's animation movie about the Tories comes out, <laughs> she'll make the perfect villain. I think we'll call it <laughs> 101 Allegations. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, that's fair enough, but I think allegations suggest she's not guilty. Mm. So it's 101 damnation. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Just a quick question, though. Do you shop in Ikea? Uh, yeah, I was. I was actually trying to get into Ikea, largely for these spaghetti meatballs, which are <laughs> extremely good. But, no, I was caught. You know, I went there. Yeah. Um, the bloke was making jokes at my expense. The... <laughs> The leader, very amusing. <laughs> 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 and on our spe speed awareness course, there was one girl who just wouldn't admit it. <laughs> and we were there about half past four, and all of us it? were saying, just say you're guilty. <laughs> <laughs> no, she said the signs were too small. <laughs> so, what's Boris Johnson done now, allegedly? 
Well, uh, oh. the suggestion is that um, he broke COVID regulations not only in his London flat, but also at Chequers, at his country house, which is a big shock to me, because I thought he would break the rules in one place and keep them in the other. <laughs> <laughs> And now he said, I don't want the public paying for those lawyers. I'm going to pay for my own. You think, ah, too late, mate. No, he's not going to pay for them. No, he, we're, he paying, still wants we're paying, paying for We're paying for a different set yes. of lawyers. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't want the government appointed ones. He wants to appoint his own, but where the taxpayer still pays for them. Right. Yeah. Is it, is it um, better call Saul? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so he held gatherings at Chequers, which were against the COVID restrictions in place at the time, which was between June... He's denied this, though, which yeah. means it's true. <laughs> <laughs> Sources told The Times that the alleged breaches involved Johnson's family as well as his friends, although a source close to Johnson denied this. Then Rachel Johnson stepped in to help. She told LBC all the rules were followed whenever <laughs> I went to Chequers. <laughs> Questions, Millard. I think Sunak's a little bit pissed off because he wasn't invited. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did this all come about then? Essentially, he got shot by his own people. I yeah. mean, the public, you are paying for Boris's defence. And as part of the defence, he handed over his diaries, and the people look, blimey, look what he was doing then. <laughs> and they reported him to the police. Yeah, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it like. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody is worried that as soon as you get near Boris, you get fired and you lose your job and life falls <laughs> apart and you end up in a gutter. Uh, <laughs> apart from the chairman of the BBC, obviously. <laughs> it is time, though, to pull up the deck chair and get out the popcorn, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, once his WhatsApps start to be revealed, just like the Matt Hancock stuff... <gasps> Amazing. They are. I enjoy that. <laughs> Supporters of Boris have complained about stitch up and smear. Oh, Sounds like a firm of solicitors, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Gynecologist. <laughs> <laughs> See, I thought that, but I didn't want to say it. Yeah. <laughs> I was there with you, but I thought, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I wouldn't want to see that on television. Absolutely not. <laughs> this is the BBC. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I've, actually, I've actually got my muff out on telly and done a live smear test. It got me a BAFTA nomination, actually. <laughs> This isn't Channel 4 lunchtime now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> there are people watching. <laughs> oh! Right, no. You're going to take that. Right, no. Here we go. Are you going to take that? This is it. The shit is hitting the fan now, look. <laughs> <laughs> right, what has Boris Johnson called the Deputy Prime Minister, Oliver Dowden, who is, of course, in charge of the Cabinet Office? What's he called him? A pussio. <laughs> <laughs> be one of his nicknames. Oh, God, not an old... Is he an old Etonian as well, Dowden? I don't think he is. Is he not? No, I think he went to another public school. Oh, did he? <laughs> yeah, it's the same lot, isn't it, really? That's no, true. they're not all... We're, we're not... They're not all... <laughs> <laughs> the same by any means, Carol, honestly. <laughs> he called him a compliant tool of the blob. Who's the blob? The blob is anyone who opposes Boris. Oh, are we? <laughs> What else are Boris's enemies supposed to be holding up? Is it banners? <laughs> no. Shall I tell you? Yeah. yeah, tell us. His resignation honours list, so Nadine oh, Doris yeah. and a few other MPs have been told they can't wait until the next election will have to give up their seats as MPs to take up their lady ships, which means there could be at least three by-elections. I'm sorry, I grew up in Nigeria. Right? I'm Nigerian. I grew up in Nigeria, so for me, by-election just means that votes are on sale. What exactly? <laughs> <laughs> It's when an MP leaves their position for whatever reason, they then have to vote in another MP for that constituency, and it's called a by-election. We're a couple of years behind Nigeria in terms of corruption. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the boys back home are actually quite proud of your progress. You know, you've got... <laughs> <laughs> this is the most welcome I've ever felt in this country. <laughs> um, your old mate, Michelle Moon's still got her peerage, hasn't she? Oh, 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 where do we begin? <laughs> you were uh, friends, weren't you? Huh? Because you've said a few things publicly, though, about it, haven't you? About yes, her. I have. And, and to be honest, it, it just is the very worst thing that anyone could do, is to profiteer from the first lockdown. It's absolutely <laughs> disgusting, but 
none of it, and a lot of effort. <laughs> um, but a lot of evidence has been put forward now, and the National Crime Agency raided her and her husband's homes, offices and everything. We're a year on, and mm. nothing has been done. It's insulting and disgusting that nothing has happened either way. <laughs> frankly. What was that you were saying about being behind Nigeria, bro? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I take it back. We're way ahead. <laughs> way ahead. Yeah, the government is suing a company that Michelle Munn's linked to for £130 million pounds, uh, over unusable PPE. Uh, the BBC flew Chris Mason halfway around the world to the G7 summit uh, to ask Rishi Sunak a question. What was it? About Suella Braverman, wasn't it? Yeah, should we have a look? Yeah. Chris Mason, BBC News. Uh, will you ask the independent advisor on Minister's interest to look into your Home Secretary's conduct after she asked civil servants to help her deal with being caught speeding? And do you have full confidence in Suella Braverman? Did you have any questions about the summit? <laughs> oh, he's obviously in a bad mood there, isn't he? He wasn't happy with that. But he appointed her Home Secretary. He didn't have to. She was part of the failed Liz Truss experiment. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's had plenty of chances to sack her, but he just doesn't dare do it. What I love, or don't, is that Sunak's there. He is currently under investigation, is he not? because of his wife's shares in the childcare company, which was recommended by the government and their new policy. I mean, it just goes... The layers are almost Nigerian. <laughs> they really are. They're like Ghana level right now, but if they want to... What does Rishi Sunak lose every day? It's vast amounts of money, cos he's fallen down in the, the Sunday Times Rishi list, as it's known. <laughs> um, and he and his wife are, are losing a small amount of money through, I believe it's Infosys. Yeah, correct. Uh, and that's the stuff that she was dodging tax on because of declaring I think we call it status. avoiding. Yes. <laughs> but she's never offered to pay back the 20 million that she could have paid since he became a member of parliament. So I call that dodging. <laughs> It's in the past. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Rishi loses half a million uh, every day. So the Rishis are down to their last half a billion, unbelievably. <laughs> um, he was so cross, he punched President Macron in the stomach. <laughs> More bad news for the government as well. The legal migration figures came out this week. Net migration to the UK last year was 606,000 people. It's gone up quite a lot. What do you think on this, Nabil? Are you surprised? Woo! Get in there, lads. Um... <laughs> yeah. I love it. You know how many nice takeaways are going to open now from other countries? <laughs> Legal immigration, do you say? It wasn't illegal? No, no legal. Not legal. legal. Yes. Well, what's the problem? They're doing it yeah. legally. What's the problem? But it's gone up quite a lot. It was about 200,000 a couple of years ago. Well, I don't like... I don't like... Just if I refresh my 300 years ago, a few people came over to certain countries <laughs> also... Well, not quite legally. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> I mean, eventually we persuaded them to leave, but they took some stuff, so... <laughs> <laughs> as far as I see it, you owe us, so... Um... <laughs> There are a lot of Nigerians, aren't there, in those figures? My friend, why do you like bringing all these small <laughs> stuff? I'm just <laughs> interested. We are all Nigerians, somehow. <laughs> I lived in Nigeria for four years. Did you? No wonder we have so many problems. <laughs> 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 I was between naught and four, so... <laughs> but still, I can still create trouble. <laughs> wow, so you're actually in Nigeria? Technically. Ah, oh, my guy, chop lock woman. <laughs> <laughs> Were you born there, then? No, I left Wales to, to go to Nigeria. You're Welsh! I'm <laughs> <laughs> Nigerian. How many different people that everybody hates do you want to be? <laughs> 
is the news that Boris Johnson may have broken the rules during lockdown by hosting a series of parties at Chequers, which he insists can't be true as he was too busy hosting parties at Downing Street. <laughs> <laughs> After being caught speeding, Suella Braverman has been fined and was given three points. When he became Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak insisted his government would be based on integrity, professionalism and accountability. Three points Suella hasn't got. <laughs> <laughs> Before they were handed over to the inquiry, some of Boris Johnson's more controversial WhatsApp messages were redacted, leading the Metropolitan Police to respond, what? You can redact them. <laughs> <laughs> Have a look at this. Yes. OK, that's the National Television Awards. Uh, this morning's probably winning an award there. And uh, my brother's done what? <laughs> <laughs> yes, so this is the this morning where Philip Schofield has had to leave after 20-odd years of presenting the daytime uh, live show. He had such a decorated career, he was a legend, and then he left. There wasn't, like, a big hoo-ha about him leaving. Just left, like a disgruntled intern. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hope he stole something before he left, because that's... <laughs> you just wonder how much more he could have achieved if he didn't rub people the wrong way. This is the news that Philip Schofield has left ITV daytime show this morning, showing just how quickly a career on daytime television can come to a crashing halt overnight. Good hell. <laughs> <laughs> I found this story quite difficult to follow, since I didn't know who they were. Um, <laughs> uh, or, or, indeed, there was such a thing as daytime TV. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I always imagine it as people talking when someone's hoovering, so it doesn't really matter what they say. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're on it, aren't you? Well, I do every other Friday, yeah, with Alison and uh, lovely Dermot. So are you going to take over? Is it going to be Holly not... and Carol? No. Oh. Probably Holly and Alison, I would have thought. Is that where your money is? That's where I put my money, yeah. Would you, yeah. Steph? Yeah. I mean, I suppose it's always going to yes. be really difficult, isn't it? You know, when there's a bit of rift between a much-loved, long-running TV duo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but we don't sit next to each other. Yeah. <laughs> What's the secret to your success as a pair? We don't talk to each other outside of a recording. <laughs> Emergency presenters have been drafted in. Here's how Alison Hammond and Dermot O'Leary paid tribute to Philip Schofield the day after his departure was announced. And just to be clear, he hadn't died. <laughs> <laughs> now, we can't start today's show without paying tribute to the man who spent the last two decades sitting on the This Morning sofa, Philip Schofield. So, as a show, everyone on and off screen at ITV and This Morning, thank you for a huge thank you. And what was done to make the show such a success over the last 21 years. Is not the thing with people on daytime telly that they give an impression of being incredibly nice? Mm. And apparently, Carol, behind the scenes, people aren't very nice. The smiley, lovely, you're the people next door, you're the sit on the sofa and say, would you want to eat this thing or... <laughs> <laughs> Ian, are you forgetting you've actually been on my show? Yeah. And it was I mean, daytime. It was favours. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you were featuring in a section called Where Are They Now? <laughs> <laughs> when I was on it, it was called Where Were They Then? <laughs> I love daytime telly, don't you? Yeah. I mean, I love daytime telly too, but I spent time in jail, so... You know, I... <laughs> <laughs> Should we have a look at what Eamon Holmes had to say about it all? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. All of this course follows the big announcement on Saturday from Philip Schofield uh, that he was stepping down. Oh, stop, please, let's just stop this. He was sacked. <laughs> right. <laughs> All this nonsense about giving him... I've decided to step down. I'm sure you did. Sure you did. Here, here's your P45. Now step down. <laughs> you know, why, why, do we, why do we propagate the, this language? I've decided to st step down. And she says... Um, Oh, the couch will not feel the same without him being there. 
Well, she wanted them not there, so what's she moaning about the couch not feeling the same for? I mean, they deserve each other, I suppose. <laughs> um, so he's now on a show that nobody watches at all. That's GB News, isn't it? It is GB News, yeah. Blimey. Have you ever seen Jacob Rees-Mogg doing his show? Yes. Oh. No. No. <laughs> yeah, that's... I don't only like any excerpts on this show. I once, once I was staying in a hotel where the TV was stuck on GB News and I ended uh. up watching an entire episode. I just got in a trance. I think that's how <laughs> it was. You must have emptied the minibar, though. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, yeah, through my eyeballs. Yeah. I was doing shots. <laughs> what did uh, TV pundit Piers Morgan have to say about all of this? Uh, didn't he say that it was the, you know, what you see on the screen is a facade? Mm, yeah. Piers Morgan was keen to point out that in the world of TV, behind those nicey, nicey smiles lies an abyss <laughs> of backstabbing and toxic buckets of foul mouthed manure. <laughs> The Daily Mail carried out a poll after the news of Philip Schofield's departure. What was the question that they asked their readers? Who is Philip Schofield? <laughs> <laughs> the Daily Mail asked readers, who do you want to see on the This Morning oh. Sofa this week? Yeah. And 75% of the 5,569 oh, readers Boris. who took part replied, none. I'm sick to the back teeth of the lot of them. <laughs> Finally, this morning wasn't the only show on television having problems. Here's the start of a news bulletin on S4C News, which is Channel 4 in Wales. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See if you can spot the technical glitch. Yeah. Would you put an arrow, trust you, Vlanev, and yes, are a good son of your kid? Figure out, see, never is. Talk of the lie, he's a legend for turning like that. <laughs> this is the news that Philip Schofield has stepped down from his co presenting role on this morning. Holly and Phil have also received a nomination in this year's National Television Awards, mm -hmm. presumably for Best Drama. <laughs> <laughs> Despite leaving this morning, Philip has stated that he will continue to present Dancing on Ice alongside Holly Willoughby, and they'll save on the budget because the rink's going to be frozen just by the atmosphere <laughs> between them. <laughs> So to round two, the strengthometer of news. Fingers on buzzers, teams. Mm. <laughs> yeah, Ian? It's the Chelsea Flash Show. I thought this was about the shortage of fruit pickers. <laughs> <laughs> is it Just Stop Oil? So this is the news that Just Stop Oil protesters have targeted one of the gardens at the Chelsea Flower Show. Uh, the garden they targeted was the one designed for wealth manager RBC Brew and Dolphin. What form did the protest take then? Was it like a. F uh, I, I know it was orange. Was it like at the snooker? Orange powder, yeah. It's the yeah. same kind of thing, I think. Yeah, let's have a look. Oh, for God's sake. No! No! no. no. Stop it! You bloody no. morons! No! Stop! <laughs> that is the poshest. <laughs> Whitest thing. <laughs> <laughs> One of them is throwing it over herself. Yes. <laughs> what happened next? Batman turned up. <laughs> oh, they got arrested and taken away by the police, I should imagine. By the flower squad. <laughs> no. Let's find out what happened no. next. This isn't Chicago, is it? 
What a sort of thing that would happen in America. Wait. There'd be at least 15 people <laughs> dead by now. <laughs> so, the, the person spraying the water on them, were they part of the demonstration? No. <laughs> She's part of the Chelsea Flower Show police, and that's a very small water cannon. <laughs> <laughs> What in the vegan barbecue is going on? <laughs> the woman was a visitor. She who's... was a visitor? Yeah. She well, was, she, she was enjoying event. looking at the garden and they were getting in the way, so she hosed them down. <laughs> she didn't hose them down, she watered them. No, <laughs> they're just... <laughs> now they're going to grow even bigger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what did the clean-up operation involve? More water. <laughs> Watching that, I thought if she hadn't done the water, they could have just brushed it up and got a Dyson round, like you do when you're watching this morning. <laughs> Dyson is the name of Ian's butler. <laughs> <laughs> Spelt Digby Featherstone Huffston. <laughs> right, putting the protest to one side, what's the big debate in the gardening world at the moment? It's how wild should your garden be? And yeah. Should you let lots of weeds in it? Yes, oh, it is. Yeah. Whether or not to rewild. Yeah. Alan Titchmarsh isn't keen. Is he not? No, arguing that it poses a risk to the skill of gardening. Oh. Yeah. What, if you just leave it? <laughs> you mean <laughs> it, it could spell the end of Alan Titchmarsh? <laughs> yeah. Do you know that it's no more May? What don't do you mow... mean? Don't mow your lawn in May? Yeah, don't trim your bushes in May. <laughs> let, let it go wild, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, what has Monty Don said he would do if he were king? Free ganja for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Send everybody a packet of seeds. No. No. <laughs> Tell us. Monty Don wants to ban artificial grass. Anyone here got artificial grass? Have you? Yeah. It's great. Oh, you got a boo there for that. Yeah. Really? I think he's got a, a orange got... powder in his... <laughs> <laughs> I do. Fingers on buzzers, teams. <laughs> it's bee week. Um, <laughs> it's uh, a week in which we can celebrate bees in the, all their finery, honeybees, uh, lemon meringue bees. <laughs> This is the news that this weekend we celebrated World Bee Day. Bee Day? Oh, yeah. Bee Day. That's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> Two days before D Day. <laughs> uh, Kate Middleton was out in the garden tending to her hive for World Bee Day. Mm. Coincidentally, it's the same outfit she wears when she meets Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Man, even bees don't like her. There's none there. Uh, it's good news for bees, though because the pests which cause disease can actually be sniffed out by specially trained dogs. He's one of them. Very ready much in action. <laughs> uh, what is beekeeper Charlotte Blacker offering to guests at her bee therapy retreat in Perthshire? A massive sting. Bee sting therapy? Have you had it? Do I look? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Give it a try. Well, it's not about stinging. She's opened the first bee therapy retreat where guests sleep on beds above beehives which contain 60,000 bees. And obviously the question is, do what? they get stung? Well, a 45-minute session costs 80 quid. So I would say the answer is very much yes. <laughs> why, why not just turn on, like, an electric toothbrush and put that under your bed? <laughs> You know, like, there's so... You, you like vibrations? I'm sure there are other things you can use. <laughs> Finally, who made an unexpected cameo at a baseball game this week? Think different species. Oh, a tortoise. A seagull. A no, squirrel. No. Yes, a squirrel. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Squirrel took a wrong turn during a Major League Baseball game. Uh, let's take a look at some of the reactions. <laughs> <laughs> Do they not have squirrels in America, <laughs> judging by the <laughs> astonished look of those people? <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Paul and Nabil, your four are Olaf Schultz, Rishi Sunak, footballer Erling Haaland and Winston Churchill. Think about what Winston Churchill's wearing. Oh, he's wearing, was that known as a boiler suit, was it? A siren suit. But... A siren suit? 
Yeah, that, that's not helpful at all. <laughs> Give us a clue that's more like the answer. Yeah. OK, OK. <laughs> They've all set fashion trends apart from... Rishi Sunak. Rishi Sunak. <laughs> Everybody's wearing those white hats these days. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I used to spend so much time in safety gear when I worked at BBC Breakfast. Mm. Someone set up a fetish website of Steph in safety gear. Mm. So. <laughs> What's it you, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> Paid for a holiday. <laughs> I love a safety helmet. Though. Do you? Oh, I do, yeah. I used to work underground as an engineer and I had, like, khaki green boiler suit with a khaki green <laughs> safety helmet. Me and 2,000 men underground, it was, yeah. Did they get out alive? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm going to tell you the answer. Yeah. <laughs> Good. They've all set fashion trends apart from German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, whose fashion is so old it's wanted by a museum. <laughs> the Times reported that the German Chancellor has been carrying around the same leather satchel for 40 uh. years, and now a bid has been put in for it by the House of History. Someone's looked at museum and the thesaurus there, haven't they? <laughs> uh, if you want to look a bit more like the German Chancellor, the and great who news is. <laughs> <laughs> The great news is that if you travel to his hometown of Hamburg, this man will give you the Olaf Scholz special for under five euros. <laughs> but that man's clearly modelling the old trick glasses, false nose and moustache. <laughs> what fashion trend has Rishi Sunak set, then? Um, I don't know. Well, while in Japan at the G7, the Prime Minister... Shoes. ..wore these red socks. Oh, socks. Oh, yeah. yes, that's so they've... You see them everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> They've got the logo of Hiroshima's Toya Kart, which is uh, the Japanese Prime Minister's favourite baseball team. Here he is with Rishi. I'm realising that Sunak's just stood on his pet snail. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to see Prime Minister uh, Trudeau of Canada looking a bit stupid? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here, then? He's obviously trying to make his height. Yeah. Say, isn't he? But it's... No, was, it's do you just... think he was expecting the picture to be cropped? I mean... <laughs> I mean, I can, I can sympathise, cos my wife is five foot one, so, like, there's a technique. You kind of stand to an angle and you bend your knees. That, that looks like the floor was slippery and they got... <laughs> 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 what has Manchester City footballer Erling Haaland increased the sales of? He wears a hairband, doesn't he? But that's not it. It's not that. No. Move down the body. <laughs> He, he, he wears a hairband. <laughs> I can't stop now. <laughs> Is he the one that has his own brand of underwear? It is to do with underwear. So the football striker was recently pictured in the Manchester City changing room alongside Noel Gallagher wearing a pair of white Y fronts. Here he is. <laughs> uh, the Daily Star reported that men trying to emulate the Norwegian footballer caused Y-front sales to increase by 45%. Yes, but how many were they selling <laughs> before that? That could be like they've sold four. According to the Science Museum archives, Churchill wore one of his suits to the White House, where the First Lady, Mrs Roosevelt, declared that she was having one made for her husband. Uh, the outfit also inspired baby romper suits, which are one pieces that allow for easy nappy changes, which is the outfit that the current First Lady, Jill Biden, has had made for her husband. <laughs> How has one man made sure he never leaves the house without his favourite fashion item? Has he had it tattooed onto him? He has. Blase Ambrazak from Rochdale has had his favourite pair of Nike trainers tattooed onto his feet. Here they are. <laughs> All that effort and he's still got a pair that are two sizes too small for him. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Carol, your four are Alan Sugar, Harrison Ford, a couple on board a Ryanair flight from Mallorca, oh. and Carol Vorderman. Oh. Oh, she looks just like you. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, then. Okay. Here's the odd one out. You should know this, cos it's about you. Yes. <laughs> Is that the noise the aeroplane makes? <laughs> <laughs> so, Alan Sugar actually flies a plane. Correct. Uh, Harrison Ford is a pilot. And Carol Vorderman flies a little plane called Mildred. Yes, there we are. So, they are all pilots. So, but is Ryanair the odd one out? I think so. Is uh, she right? She is right, yeah. Yay! Yes! Yes. We've got a point! We've got a point! High five!
guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're all pilots, apart from two passengers on a Ryanair flight from Mallorca who were told to pay extra to take two pastries on board. <laughs> <laughs> what? They took their own pastries on? Yeah. And had to pay extra? Yeah, so a couple flying yeah. to Frankfurt tried to carry on two of Mallorca's speciality pastries called the uh, Ensamadas. Mm. But they were told by Ryanair that they counted as extra baggage <laughs> and no. had to pay 45 <gasps> euros each. Uh, Harrison Ford got his pilot's licence when he was 53, but why might you want to avoid getting in a plane with him? Oh, he's had a couple of problems, hasn't he? Landing and, and taking off and the bits in between. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, since getting his licence, the Hollywood star has had five flying incidents. Ooh. Yeah, in 2015, his plane suffered engine failure and he was forced to crash land on a California golf course. Uh, no one was hurt, but he took out three birdies, two eagles, and an albatross. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, should we talk about Alan Sugar? Yes. Yeah. What did Sugar recently admit he struggled to get into? Television. <laughs> <laughs> Back to clothing. A pair of trousers. Yeah. In a Times interview, he said he had to get his trousers specially made as his bum is too big for normal trousers. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Up came a catch that said he can carry five normal sized passengers. <laughs> <laughs> is, that his, is that his bum? <laughs> no wonder he's got to have specially made trousers. <laughs> Lord Sugar gives his subsidiary companies names that are made from his initials, AMS, Alan Michael Sugar. There's his aviation company, Amzer, his digital signage company, Amscreen, and his catering company, Am Sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words Round, which this week features as its guest publication, Boxer Quarterly, the magazine for boxer dog lovers. And we start with woman spots Donald Trump in what? <laughs> <laughs> it's always bread or cake, yeah, or I... toast or mother care. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a chocolate pudding. Yeah, it's got to be. Woman spots Donald Trump in her I'm chocolate dessert. Yes. Oh. Let's have a look. Here's the former US president in the chocolate pudding. <laughs> <laughs> no. BBC article about bus getting stuck under bridge written by... Is it a chatbot? Yeah, it's got to be artificial intelligence, isn't it? Got to be. BBC article about bus getting stuck under bridge written by... Caroline Lowbridge. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. This is a school bus in Leicestershire that got stuck going under a bridge. A statement was released saying... The school is working closely with the bus company to establish <laughs> what happened. Here's the bus. <laughs> I guess we'll never know. <laughs> <laughs> Next. You know the Boxer Quarterly Kennel Club event was a success because... What? You were given a treat and called Good Boy. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody died. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to do it three more times this year. <laughs> <laughs> You know the Boxer Quarterly Kennel Club event was a success because people did not start to leave until gone five. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Essex couple get payout after what? Water buffalo eat immersion heater. <laughs> you know that is nearly the answer. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I uh, yeah no, it, it is water buffalo or some bison or something local sort of oxen what, in Essex. Yeah. <laughs> They were on holiday <laughs> and they came over and they saw this and they jumped into the swimming pool. Yeah. Essex couple get paid out after water buffaloes fall into their swimming pool. <laughs> Let's have a look. <laughs> <laughs> Next. New bus stops finally arrive in Norwich, but what? Nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, facing the wrong way. New bus stops finally arrive in Norwich, but people baffled by upside-down timetable. Mm. This was in the Norwich Evening News, where they included images of their reporters at the scene looking at the timetable. <laughs> <laughs> A 
A Norfolk County Council spokesman said the timetables are now the right way. <laughs> Unfortunately, it does mean all the bus shelters are now upside down. <laughs> Next, entrance to the Pup of the Year competition were blown away. When what? Cyclone arrived. <laughs> <laughs> When, when Bobby, the beautiful boxer, turned up with extended eyelashes. <laughs> now, if that's right, I'll buy everybody a drink. <laughs> Entrance to the Pub of the Year competition were blown away when the secret judge was unveiled as none other than Mike Gadsby. <laughs> yeah, oh, really? It's still a secret. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mike Gadsby. <laughs> Yeah, the editor of the magazine wrote, I can't imagine there was anyone who did not enjoy their day. Well, he's got no imagination then, yeah. has he? <laughs> Next. The British Army were so worried about what that they what? They were, the British Army were so worried about losing the Second World War that they took out insurance. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say that he's right. <laughs> the British Army were so worried about having enough bear skins for the coronation that they hired them from fancy yeah. dress shops. Oh, that's a... <gasps> wow. Did they? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, the army were reportedly doing anything to get their hands on bear skins for the ceremony, which also explains why Paddington didn't make an appearance on the big day. <laughs> 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 And finally, temporary traffic light in Gloucestershire, what? Is not permanent. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrates uh, an anniversary. Yes! You are bloody good at this! <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. that's amazing. Is Tem that right? Yeah, temporary traffic light in Gloucestershire gets birthday cake to mark a year no. on street. <laughs> He's like the rain man of nonsense. <laughs> Yeah, let's have a look at the moving ceremony to mark the occasion. Is that a hearse in the background? <laughs> <laughs> I reckon they're waiting for the bloke on the right. What do you think? Do we have a sweet <laughs> So the final scores are Ian and Carol have seven. Yes. Paul and Nabil also have seven. Oh! Yay! 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 For me, that's a huge result. Thank you. Before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. Ian and Carol, have this. SNP, pick new auditor. <laughs> <laughs> Government ethics advisor given unredacted access to Boris's WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Nabil, get this. <laughs> when they told me I was going to be the branch manager, naturally I was very... <laughs> Note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Carol Vorderman, Paul Merton and Nabil Abdul-Rashid. And I leave you with news that in an amazing coincidence in Buxton, the Bradford and Bingley and Home Pride Flower Company outings take place on the same day. <laughs> <laughs> in ITV's revamped Bullseye, there's concern that they've spent too much on Bully's star prize. <laughs> And their suspicion of another smear campaign against Suala Braverman as a file of speed camera photos mysteriously emerges. <laughs> <laughs>